Hi, my name is Margaret Campbell, and today I will be talking about the experimental process of growing Maya arenaria, or softshell clam larvae, in a hatchery setting. To begin, clams were dug up from the Down East Institute growing site and brought back to the hatchery. They were assessed for their fertility and placed into a broodstock tank on top of a mesh screen in 24 degrees Celsius water. They were then left to spawn. Here in the video, you can see sperm being released into the water. The clams were left for a few hours until spawning had ceased. We then took a sample of the water to check for larvae. We are looking for D-shaped bodies, which you can see here. Next, the clams were placed into the system. On the left-hand side are five flow-through tanks with water being exchanged out eight times a day. On the right are static tanks where the water was not being exchanged. I hypothesized that the flow-through tank would have better growth than the static because of the constant exchange of water, which allows for waste to be taken out and let the animals have cleaner water. Every second day, the water was drained down and the larvae were counted and at two points toward the end graded to assess their different sizes. Each day, photos were taken to assess the growth of the larvae. On the 27th and 29th, you can see that the clam now has a foot. This was very exciting to know and it meant that the clam was getting big and ready to settle. Overall, the results show that the flow-through tank had better results. There is some degree of error to the sampling and counting method. However, the results continually show that the more stay alive in the flow-through than the static system. What I was looking for was clams that would sit on a 150 or 180 micron screen. This would mean that they were ready to settle by the end of the two-week experimental period. In the end, there were more of these size classes in the flow-through system. The static larva had no 180s and very few 150s. In measuring the two tanks, 24 samples were taken of the static with an average of 197.91 microns. The flow-through had 44 samples taken and an average of 184.5 microns. This size sampling shows that the static tank had larger larvae at this stage of the experiment. Days later, however, the numbers changed and the flow-through had a higher success rate with more larvae sitting on the 180 screen than the 150. Although initially the static system promoted better growth, the flow-through tanks had a better success rate. This experiment showed what a difference growing larvae of the same species can have between two different systems and the benefits of flow-through aquaculture. Thank you.